In this example, we're going to see how to build a basic preloader using ActionScript version 3. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here on our little splash screen and say create new ActionScript 3. We're going to come to our timeline. We're going to add a new layer. We're going to put our actions on our bottom layer. So we're just going to rename it by double clicking on it. Type in actions. Now our preloader is going to have both a progress bar which is going to slide across it as well as a text box which is going to update the percentage of what's completed. So I'm going to put each of those into separate layers. So I'm going to create one more layer. Layer 2 I'm going to rename to progress bar. And layer 3 I'm going to rename to my progress status. I'm going to come over here to my rectangle tool. I'm going to select it. I'm going to make sure I have a stroke as well as a fill color. Right now I just have black for my stroke and blue for my fill color. I'm going to make my stroke a little bit heavier just so it's a little bit easier to see. You can type that into the stroke size if you want so you have a more precise control over your number. I'm going to select an area and just draw a simple rectangle, trying to basically have it centered on the screen, as you see there. Now I'm going to need to be able to control this inner part of my progress bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my selection tool, select just the center part, I'm not going to select the stroke. I'm going to press the F8 key which is going to allow us to create a symbol. I'm going to name it progress bar. I'm going to make sure I have a type movie clip and I want to make sure my registration point is all the way at the far end. You'll see why that's important in just a minute. I'm going to say OK. Now the next thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to make sure I have a good instance name. And this is how I'm going to reference it in ActionScript in just a minute. And you'll see that I'm using what they sometimes refer to as camel notation or humpback notation in that I have capitalized the first letter of my second word. The next thing I want to do is I want to put a text box in so we can have the status update of how much percentage is being uh, recorded. So I'm going to select my progress text layer, go to my text tool, I'm going to make sure on my classic text, I don't need anything fancy for this with the new type of text that action, or that uh, Flash provides for you. But I do need to make sure it's on dynamic text, that way I can access it via ActionScript. I'm just going to use the underscore sans as the default font, and that will allow the system to choose what font it wants. You can choose a color of black so it's nice and legible. I might make this a little bit bigger, just so it's once again a little bit easier to see. Just type some placeholder text for now and call that done. Now with my text highlighted though, I do need to give it an instance name. So I'm going to call it progress txt, just for my progress text box. Now before I move to my actions panel, I do need to have some content. If I try to do a preloader with only this little piece of information, it's not going to give me very large file size so I won't be able to test, properly test my preloader. So what I'm going to do is going to add one more layer and I'm going to come out to my second frame. Now I'm not going to create new keyframes for my other layers because they're not needed. They're only going to be available in the first frame you'll see. And I want to import just a large image that way I have something I can show. So I'm going to choose an image I've already selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the image, I'm going to resize it, and move it in. Now this image is a little bit large, larger than I would ever use in a normal flash project. That was strictly done so that we could be able to properly test our progress bar. Now I'm going to go to my actions panel. I have my actions panel located on my same area as my timeline. The first thing I want to do is I want to stop on this first frame until the rest of my project has been loaded. So I'm just going to give the stop command. 
And then I'm going to need to also make sure I have a event handler. The event handler I want to look for is when I enter a frame. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. One of the easiest is to go up to your code snippets, choose event handlers. If it's not open, you want to go ahead and open it and choose the enter frame event. If you're not used to doing a lot of action script, this might be pretty simple because it's going to give you some basic instructions on what to do. It's going to add the event listener. Notice it says event enter frame. It's going to give you the function. It's going to give you some basic sample code where it's going to go inside the function. In this case, you're using the trace command just to say enter frame. And if I quickly preview this, you can notice in my output panel, every time a frame is created, it just writes entered frame until I close my default. So what we want to do is we need to get a couple pieces of information. Now I'm going to leave the trace statement. We're going to use that in a minute just for some quick testing. Trace is great for doing some basic testing. The first thing we need to do is we need to get the total number of bytes that our flash size is. Now there's a built-in object called loader info that we can get this information from. However, we don't want to keep on referencing because it's a very long name to get to. So we're going to create a simpler internal variable just for this function. So we're going to say var so we can create the variable. I'm going to call this total. Say colon. You'll see it brings up my look ahead typing. It's going to be a number. And it's going to be equal to, we have this. This is a way of referencing, in our case, this Flash project. And you'll see there's a lot of objects that are already created for us that we can have access to. The one I said earlier that we're looking for is loader info. As I start to type, you'll notice it finishes itself out. If I hit the enter key, it'll finish typing it for me so I don't have to do a lot of extra typing. And this also is going to minimize the chance of me having a mistake. And then say dot, and I'm looking for bytes, but the particular bytes I'm looking for in this case is bytes total. Now instead of typing, I can also use the up down arrow key to navigate through the list of our known data types and properties that it gives us access to. Do that, and then I'm going to use a semicolon to close out that line. Go to new line, say var, this one's going to be called loaded. It's also going to be a number. Now what I want to do is I want to see exactly how big this is. So I'm going to do one more and this is going to be percentage. And I'm going to make it a number as well. And I'm going to say loaded divided by total. What this is going to tell me is it's going to tell me how much percentage wise is this loaded. This is going to be a number between 0 and 1, which is what we're going to want to use in just a minute. And I'm going to come over here to my trace command. Instead of saying entered frame, I'm going to type in percentage. Control enter just to test it out. You'll notice that over on my left hand side in my output window, I'm just seeing ones. That's because it loaded so quickly because I'm right here on my local machine. If I hit control enter or preview again though, you'll notice that my numbers are slowly counting up. This is because it is actually simulating the download from a particular download speed. Now the download speed, you can see I'm right now simulating download. My download settings tells me what I'm simulating. Right now I'm simulating the old 56k modal. So you can see it's taking quite a while for it to download. Now this is not changing anything on our stage, of course, so we're going to need to make a couple more mi minor modifications in order to get that. Go back to my actions frame. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move the slider bar across. Now the way that we're going to do that is we're going to need to access this name. Hopefully you wrote down that name or you kept it in mind. In our case, it was progress bar. Remember I used the humpback notation so I have the capital letter, my first letter of my second word, dot scale x. Scale x is going to be how big should this grow. 
and this is going to be a number between 0 and 1, which is perfect for our percentage. Use a semicolon to end it, preview, do it one more time, and you can see the progress bar growing. Now you also should notice why we had the stroke. The stroke gives us an idea of the size. If we didn't know how wide that progress bar is supposed to be, we wouldn't know are we almost done or are we just starting off. By giving it an outline, we know how big that progress bar is going to be, and we know just visually looking at it real quick how long it is or how much longer we're going to need to wait in order to have it finally download. Go back to our actions panel, and let's update this loading. The problem is if you looked at the output, these are very big, long, nasty numbers. So what we're going to do, we're going to update what our percentage is, and we want to round these numbers. The easiest way to round is to use math.floor, and we're going to say percentage, and we're going to times it by 100 before we close out our parentheses, because math.floor is going to send it to the largest whole number. So if I say percentage times 100, it's going to move the decimal places two places to the right, which is going to give me a whole number, and then I'm just going to chop off any of the remaining decimal points. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to update the, the progress uh, text box. Now this was progress txt. I need to update a property of it. This is going to be the text property. What I'm going to do is going to say that it's going to be equal to percentage. And then I'm going to append to it the percentage sign. Now appending something to it is going to use the plus symbol. And we're just going to put inside quotes the percentage symbol. And then a semicolon at, after my closing quote in order to finish off my statement. Now one more time to preview. Now you can see my progress bar is growing. And my progress box is increasing in numbers slowly one percentage at a time. I've also ch wind up chopping off all those unnecessary decimal places which no one would really like to see. Go back to my actions panel. The problem is what do I do now? Once I get to 100% it's just going to stay sit here on this one particular page. We need to do something else with it. The easiest thing that we can do is we're going to add a simple if statement. We're going to say is if loaded loaded being the total number of bytes in our SWF file, is equal to, and when we want to say if it is equal to something, we're going to use two equal signs, the total number of bytes, which we put into a variable called total, then we're going to want to do something. Well, what are we going to want to do? I'm going to put what we want to do inside a set of curly braces. The first thing we're going to want to do is we want to remove this event handler. So the first thing we're going to do is going to remove the event listener, the type, and the listener function are what we're going to need to grab. Now the type, if you're not familiar, is this event dot enter name, and then our function name as such. And then we're going to give the command to continue to play our script. Now there's going to be one other thing that we're going to need to do because we're going to move to the second frame at this point and right now in our demo purposes our entire movie is only two frames long we're going to need to go to our timeline add a new blank keyframe on our second frame for our actions panel and give the stop command there as well change your settings so it's a little bit faster You can watch it load up. When it gets to the end, it's going to stop. You can see because we've left the trace statement in, the output is 100%, and it goes to our second frame. We see our image, and it is not going and flipping back to our first frame. So we no longer see the progress bar. And that is a simple preloader in Flash ActionScript version 3.